So this is taking shape. We have our input area. We can add transactions like new shoes for $12. Now there are a couple of things I wanna change though. For example, when I enter my amount here, it would be nice to have a keyboard where we can only enter numbers and where we can't even enter text here. In addition, it would be nice that when I hit this button here, this confirm button on my inputs, I do actually trigger add transaction if a value for title and for amount is provided. And last but not least here, when I output my amount, it would be nice to always see two digits, not more than that and not less, because right now I can also enter something like this. And of course that looks super ugly. So to fix or to change this, let's first of all go to new transaction dart, which is where we have these inputs. And to make sure that we can only enter numbers on the second input here. And there you can change the keyboard type and that takes a text input type, which in the end is a class. And there you have a couple of static properties again. Again, static properties on classes. That's a bit like enums, just having more complex values than just numbers. And there you can set this to date time, which is a perfect input if user should enter date. Email address, which is great for entering email addresses because the at sign is easily available and so on. But here I want number. And with that, if we now save this, if I tap in here, we now get a number keyboard, which is of course good. In addition, to make sure that we also submit our form when we press the done button, we can add the on submitted listener here. Now I wanna do the same as I do down here. So I can of course simply copy that function. But if you find yourself copying a lot of code, it's always a good idea to refactor it into a single named function, which you then can call from all these places. So that when you ever change something in that function, you don't have to change it in three different places, but only in one place. So let's grab this logic here where we call add tx. And let's add a new function here in our new transaction widget a new method to be precise. It'll not return anything. I'll name it submit data. The name is up to you though. And in there, I will call add tx and forward the title controller and the parsed amount. Now down there, I call submit data therefore, or I point at it without parentheses because I don't want to execute it in line. I only want to pass a pointer at this method so that it is executed when the button is pressed. However, here on submitted actually gives us the value the user entered thus far as a value. So here we have to use a slightly different syntax, provide an anonymous function where we get that value. And I don't really use it, but still I need to accept it. Otherwise Flutter will complain. An alternative would have been to not use an anonymous function here but accept that value up here, then this would also be fine. You just need to have a function that in the end reacts to unsubmitted that does take that value, even if you don't use it. But since I don't plan on using it, the approach I like more is to not take the argument up here, but instead use an anonymous function down there and add an underscore here, which is kind of a convention, not a hard rule, but a convention to signal, I get an argument, but I don't care about it here. I have to accept it but I don't plan on using it. So instead of giving it a more meaningful name, I add a underscore here to indicate, yeah, I don't use it. So now this is the code I can use for on submitted on all my, or on both of my text fields here. And also when the button is pressed down there, I wanna call submit data. Another advantage of not accepting a value in submit data is that here for the button, I wouldn't get one. So here I would have had to manually uh, provide one uh, by calling this with something like uh, this, if we added it, submit data to accept a string. So that's why this approach of not accepting a string in submit data, but instead dumping the value here is preferable. So now we submit that whenever one of these buttons is pressed, of course the button could be pressed before both a title and an amount have been entered. So what I'll do first is I'll extract that data. Entered title is title controller.text. And here I'll have my entered 
amount, which is amount controller.txt. And I'll do the double conversion right here already. So double parse. I'll call it here. Down there, I will therefore just refer to my entered title. And then here to the entered amount. But first of all, I want to check whether we do have values in here. So I'll add if entered title is empty. So if the user did not enter anything there, or if entered amount is smaller or equal to zero, which also would be invalid, I also don't want negative amounts, then I'll just return here. And if I just return here, then this code will not execute because return also stops the function execution. It means the code after return is not reached. That's also something important. Return stops the function execution. This code is not reached if this here is called. So if we make it into the if block, we'll not try to add a new transaction. So therefore here, if I hit add transaction with no values entered, I actually get an error because I try to, well, convert something to a double which is not convertible. But if I try to, for example, submit minus one here and I hit add transaction, I don't get an extra error, but we also don't get the transaction. So stopping this works. The same is true if I enter a valid amount for my amount here, but not for my transaction. If I hit this done button or add transaction, this also doesn't get added. So our little dummy validation here works. Now with that little dummy validation added here, we can almost test this. One mistake I just spotted is, of course here, when I use this approach of using an anonymous function, here inside of that function body, we then have to call submit data like this. Otherwise, this will not execute because now this anonymous function is passed as a reference to unsubmitted, the reference to this anonymous function to be precise, inside of that anonymous function. When it executes, we have to manually trigger our function. Only here for unpressed, where we don't have a wrapping anonymous function, we just pass the reference to our own function. With that, if we save that, we go back to our page here. If I enter something valid here, but let's say I have minus 10 down there and I hit this button, you see it doesn't get added. But if I enter something valid here and I use this confirm button, it does get added. So now we can use this as well and we have some basic validation in place. Now regarding the output of our prices here, for that we can go to our transaction list, which is where we do output all these transactions. And there for the transaction amount, in the end, what I want to do here, on amount, we can call toString, but I mentioned that we don't have to do that if we use this interpolation. But there is a special kind of toString. You can use toString as fixed and then define how many decimal places you want to show, for example, two. And if you use this, if you use toString as fixed two, then every value has exactly two decimal places. No matter if you only entered one or none or if you possibly entered a lot, then you see this gets rounded. So this is really convenient to have a nice user interface where we don't have too long numbers or too short numbers.